very much. I am working on time. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, I should start by saying I'm merely a member of the British Computer Society. So in August company of fellows, I feel slightly unempowered, but uh, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll forgive me there. I did also have a ZX81 person who remembered that, remember those machines. But with the, uh, the 16K memory expansion pack, which is the bottle on the back, it leaves all your code. Um, thank you, and, uh, and uh, for, for uh, entertaining me this, uh, this, this afternoon. Uh, I welcome this, this uh, brief opportunity uh, to talk about the Public Services Network and the, uh, and the new approaches to security that it's bringing uh, in the way that government and the wider public sector is going to connect up to 6 million users uh, with each other and to the services uh, on which they rely to meet citizen needs. Um, this is not going to be a technical uh, exposition. Uh, as, as Bill was just saying, um, many of the, the issues around security, perceptual security, and implementation of security are not technical issues. They are, they are social issues, they're people issues, they're mindset issues. Uh, and uh, uh, I will probably major uh, on, on that aspect of the way that the, the PSA Um, the, the PSA is very much a work in progress. Uh, although it is a reality today, you can sign up and join the PSA today. It's, it is a developing, uh, it's a developing network, and it will continue to develop. Uh, the, the, the roadmap already stretches some five years into the uh, some five years into the future, and probably, though I've not been around from the start, it probably uh, looks back uh, over about five years of work. Um, to date, uh, so far. Perhaps though people are not uh, entirely familiar um, with, the, with the PSA, so before talking about the security, perhaps I should start with a, with a short introduction to the concept of the network and, uh, and, its, and its benefits. PSA is a, is a, is a logical network um, that connects customers and service suppliers to each other. It's been described as an by some people, as an internet for public services. Uh, it provides the opportunity to, uh, to generate a competitive marketplace in network connectivity uh, and in service availability to public sector organisations uh, and other organisations who now deliver public services. Increasingly, uh, public services and public sector are not the same thing. Uh, this is a network for, delivery, for, for organisations who deliver public services. In the past, government networks have tended to result from single procurements, um, which um, cable and wireless in, for a um, which, which cable and wireless win, uh, or if they don't win, they buy the company who does. Um, so uh, there's been a, there's been a, a single network um, around which uh, network services uh, have been, have been uh, delivered across government. Um, the PSA is formed from connectivity and services that can be provided by any organisation which meets the PSN standards, which can meet the PSN um, codes and, and, uh, and deliver the services uh, in the way that, that the organisation uh, the network requires. Its purpose, of course, uh, is the lower cost. Everything, has, uh, everything ongoing has a purpose to, del to lower costs. But this, we're not simply talking about the cost of communications infrastructure. We're talking about lowering costs by finally making a reality, I believe, of the ability to share and reuse services across the public sector. Something we've been talking about for uh, several years now. Uh, PSN makes that credible. Uh, it's about saving costs, lowering costs by lowering the, bar by lowering the barriers to entry. Uh, that, that new suppliers face, particularly new suppliers to central government. Uh, and it's about reducing the costs of operating securely. Because PSN is an assured environment, uh, providing appropriate security for conducting public sector business through what is, for government, a new security model. 
the change in the mindset as I was uh, describing. Which I guess brings us brings us on to the, the main topic for today, which is uh, the, the new world of government network security. The way that security has or IT security has evolved in government has resulted so far in a multiplicity of incompatible bilateral data and service sharing practices. Every organisation, every network has built itself into a fortress like so many medieval walled cities. That boundary security approach um, was designed primarily to keep people out uh, and, and offered only tightly controlled and limited passage into and uh, out of the, the, the outside world. Some while ago now, so maybe as long as five years ago, but it's taken a bit of time to come to fruition, um, it was recognised that this was leading to um, expensive, inefficient, uh, inflexible systems. That it was actively discouraging change and innovation, sharing and collaboration. Uh, and it was promoting a world in which security was both a, a physical and a psychological barrier. Um, it was about creating the mindset in which, and I'm sure you, you're entirely familiar with it, that security is there to say no, security is there to prevent you doing all the good things that you, can, uh, that, that you could do, um, and it's about preventing you in your, in your, uh, in your work life uh, from doing all the good things you know you can do because you do them in your private life. Um, so it was creating those physical, psychological barriers as well as being a, a financial barrier to doing business in the, in the 21st century. What we need are network services that are less like medieval towns uh, and markets and more like modern shopping complexes. This should be blue water. It is. Um, that's blue water. Um, undoubtedly, shopping experiences like going to blue water do come with their security constraints. Uh, Blue Water itself famously prohibits the wearing of any item of clothing which restricts the view of the wearer's head or face. Um, that's actually an issue about um, uh, identity to which we, we, we may return in, in, in a little while. But while there are security measures, primarily places like Blue Water are designed to draw you in easily, to give you easy access, to put suppliers and customers in contact with each other across a, across a range of services, products, goods. Um, without fortress security, we need to conceive of an approach to security which is perhaps more akin to human biology. Uh, our bodies have some external resistance to disease. There are mechanisms, uh, uh, and I'm no biologist, but there are mechanisms that, that look to prevent disease entering the body. But our health primarily depends on our ability to detect and eradicate infection internally. PSN is also uh, returning to some basics and rebalancing some basics. We all know that security <coughs> is a combination of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, when you're talking about health, health records, for example, um, it, 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 you may or may not really care whether um, whether the, your your blood group uh, you know, is is kept confidential. Um, but when it's released to the emergency services about to pump blood into your uh, into your arm, you sure as hell want to be confident that they've got it right. The integrity is critical in that, in, in, that, in that case. If PSN is the internet for government, uh, it's an internet that, that offers greater assurance of integrity and availability than the public internet does. Insofar as confidentiality is concerned, government will be principally relying on the same products, services and techniques that are already widely used by commercial business to protect its online transactions and its corporate functions. Government should not, for the majority of its business, have unique security requirements that are not met by commercially available products. 
The PSN security model then is based on these principles. As I say, for the majority of its business, governments and the wider public sector need do no more than their security conscious counterparts in the, in the private sector. PSN is a component part of the IT strategy for government to ensure that internal operations are as user-centric and digitally delivered uh, as it aspires for the delivery of services to citizens. Bringing together, though, um, potentially, as I say, six million users um, in thousands of organizations to share a, a common uh, network or network model demands much of common trust. In the, uh, in the few minutes left to me, uh, I'd like to expand a little on, on some of, of these principles which seek to make common trust a reality uh, across the PSA. <coughs> Starting with governance, this diagram shows just a part of the PSN governance structure. Um, PSN is, uh, we may be making security easier, but I'm not sure we're making governance easier. Um, PSN is, is possibly, though, a, a unique combination of mandated and collaborative governments in both its customer base and its supply chain. Um, both customers and suppliers need to be convinced that PSN is delivering the right things in the right way uh, in order for it to operate fundamentally by consent. Government can man central government can mandate on itself a, a particular way of behaving, but it cannot mandate uh, it can only encourage and operate by consent outside that narrow outside the narrow central government uh, arena into the wider public sector. Um, an example of this, the, the, the PSNGB, which um, used to stand for the PSN Governing Board, I think they just like the acronym now, uh, as so many organisations do, is a trade association for any organisation that provides PSN services to the public sector uh, and, uh, and, and is formed to ensure that, that they have their input into the way that the network is, 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 uh, is, is operated and, and, runs for, and is moving forward. Um, but organisations need to have confidence that standards, once agreed, are effectively monitored and enforced. And actually, the bit of the governance that, uh, um, that, that's showing on the, on the <coughs> slide there is the piece that, that looks after monitoring and enforcement of, of, of common standards. These are standards which range from the detailed and technical uh, through to broad statements of policy, such as those that are, that, are, that are illustrated on the slide. I mentioned earlier the importance of uh, identity. Um, being confident uh, in who you're dealing with and how you're dealing with them is critical to the security model. Uh, one of the uh, keystones for the PSN is it should deliver effective single sign-on, I was interested in what you were saying about multiple sign-ons, uh, to its services across the public sector. And to do that, uh, PSN will be adopting, will be adopting a federated uh, identity model. At this point, just to avoid any confusion, I must stress this is the model for employee identity. This is not the work that's being pursued by the government digital service, which was, which are, uh, 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 was being uh, referred to in, in answer to a question earlier um, around insure, uh, the assurance processes for, for citizen services. PSM will operate a full trust framework based on identity verification and validation standards and uh, it will operate fully attributable um, audit capability. Work to establish those standards has been ongoing for a while now. Uh, it's nearing completion and we anticipate uh, agreement in, in May this year for implementation um, towards the end of the uh, to, towards the end of 2013. Um, but as I suggested a few minutes ago, for all the controls, standards, and governance in place, it's situation awareness um, that 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 will um, that, that is critical um, to assuring the security of the PSN. Um, we're back in the shopping centre again. The police patrolling our shopping complex not only detect and observe abnormal behaviour but do so against the background of intelligence drawn from elsewhere and from experience of other environments. We must, uh, we must do the same. And uh, Natalie referred to the creation of the CISP, 
um, uh, the cyber information um, uh, sharing uh, partnership, which is, is being stood up to assist not only PSN, of course, but the rest of government with this. Um, finally, uh, just to prove there is nothing new in the world, uh, our Norse ancestors uh, believed that, uh, that their god Odin maintained his situation awareness by sending out his ravens, um, Hunin and Munin, uh, to fly around the world and bring back to him by sitting on his shoulders and whispering in his ears knowledge of everything that was happening. Um, perhaps we're only, after all, uh, updating our worldview and not creating a new one. Thank you very much. Thank you.